This is Jonathan Kirsting here with the Tech5 Radio One Mic Stand, also with the Pittsburgh Technology Council, on our saga of telling a ton of crazy cool stories with everything right that is going on within this terrible COVID situation that we're dealing with right now. And one of the things that, that's really been making news, obviously, is hospitals. We all know so much crazy stuff is going with hospitals. I mean, we have the best and brightest, bravest people working at hospitals to keep everybody safe. And then we think about our kids, right? I mean, we're all terrified for our children and keeping them safe. And you bring these two things together and we have our topic today, which is all talking about children's hospital and, and really what they're going through during this crazy time. And so I really couldn't be more excited to talk to Rachel Petruselli. She's the president of Children's Hospital Foundation today. Hey, Rachel, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. I think we have an awesome story to tell. Great, thank you, Jonathan. Really a pleasure to be with you today. And have a chance to talk about what's happening at Children's and what's most concerning about our kids. Absolutely. So what's your background real fast and how long have you been, how long have you had this gig here at Children's Hospital Foundation? Sure. Um, so I, you know, I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, but I've been in Pittsburgh now since I went to the University of Pittsburgh and graduated Excellent. with a business degree. Okay. My professional career has always been in the nonprofit field. Um, I've been at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh Foundation for 15 years, almost 16 years. Excellent. And most, um, most recently named its president um, about a year and a half ago. Okay. At the great honor of serving as its president. That's awesome stuff. I mean, obviously, this is a work of passion for you, I have to assume. People don't go into this type of work because it's a job, right? You're doing this because, man, you, you, you live and breathe helping kids, especially kids that are sick. As far as that. I have to tell you, Jonathan, I, you know, doing, um, raising money is, is not easy, um, but it, it is something that comes from a place of passion mm -hmm. and a place of wanting to help facilitate the ability to, to do something good and have an impact on the world. And I worked for a lot of great nonprofits before I got to Children's Hospital. Um, but I have to say that the mission um, that I'm supporting at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh is one that's both personal and, mm -hmm. uh, and very meaningful in my life. I have a daughter, um, two children, but one with special needs that has okay. been a great um, user, consumer of our healthcare at Children's Hospital. Right. So the opportunity to be able to do something that gives back um, in gratitude for the great healthcare she's received is something every day I find very rewarding. Yeah, I mean, that gives you your drive to do what you do and because you see the impact of it and the importance of it, obviously, every single day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, so, I mean, this whole crazy situation we're in, it's just, it's impacting everybody. I mean, how, how are you and the foundation coping and we're all adapting, which I think has been really interesting during this whole thing. For as crazy as it is, we find that, man, we're human beings and we care and we want to keep moving and grooving, so we adapt, right? So, what are you guys doing? Adapting is a great word for it, and, and we're trying to make the, both, the most of it. You know, some of us are following the spectrum of more optimism versus pessimism. I think I'm more on the optimistic side, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly a time that we're taking to embrace what is positive and beautiful about staying at home. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we don't have enough time to dedicate to being at home and being present with our kids and being present with our spouses, being present with people in our lives um, that we're, we spend, you know, that we live with. And yet here's this time we're forced to, to spend more time together and slow things down. So try and embrace that. Um, yeah. I feel blessed. Yeah, um, definitely. Opportunity. Um, I, I, my daughter, my 14 year old um, and I are taking up knitting it's really? Oh, that's cool. Craft. Okay, I like this. I'm yeah. Experience. So we've taken up knitting. We're knitting our COVID scarves. COVID scarves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you have time, can you knit me a COVID face mask or something? Like that? You know, I'm not sure that my skills are there yet, but I'll work okay. on it. Um, so, you know, just trying to find ways to spend time doing things that we always put off. We never have enough time. So right. coping is, is, um, is part of the game. And I'd say, you know, for the foundation, I'm so proud of my team and how quickly uh, we, you know, moved to our remote working uh, arrangement and how seamless that was for mm -hmm. our work, how seamless it was in our business continuity. Um, everybody was armed with the tools and the technology that they needed to work remotely. 
I do chuckle um, as I empathize with them when I have my all staff meetings and I can <laughs> see the backgrounds and the different places <laughs> from. Somebody's retrofitted their closet for their office, <laughs> the floor, nice. someone's relegated to the bedroom. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're making the most of it, we're right? We're adapting. See, we're adapting. I'm right yeah. now in my attic. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> with the squirrels. And uh, yes, having a great And all I time. see is this nice green background for you. I know. <laughs> in my attic, my slope ceiling. <laughs> yes, I have the same slope ceilings, but you'd never know behind my lovely Huntington <laughs> Bank green screen I have going on right here. So, <laughs> so how's the hospital holding up? Because I mean, we hear about the other hospitals, but it's like, I haven't really heard much in the news about what's going on at Children's. I mean, obviously it, it's got to be a crazy situation where people can't come in like they used to because it's, it, it's, 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 it's just right. nuts. So there, you know, the good news is, um, UPMC Children's Hospital, from the very um, start of this uh, experience, was immediately prepared. The preparations um, for a surge uh, were the same at our hospital as, as the adult hospitals were taking. Okay, yeah. That maybe the um, incidence of serious uh, symptoms and serious consequences from the virus weren't seeming to affect children in the same way adults were being affected. Thank goodness, I know. I mean, so, whew, like, yeah. So that's that's good news um, and a blessing for sure. But nevertheless, um, both in terms of being prepared for the surge, taking steps to reduce and eliminate any um, elective or non-essential types of procedures and surgery, okay. um, reducing the volume in the hospital intentionally to respect social distancing guidelines, Keep your space. Yep. Right. You you need a lot. You need a lot of elbow room. So our faculty, our physicians, moved very quickly to ramp up telemedicine. I think yeah. that's a winner um, in healthcare for um, this experience is how um, ready telemedicine um, was to deploy. Yep. But it had been such a slow process over the last. I don't know five to 10 years of ramping up telemedicine as a <laughs> acceptable and a hey. delivery mode. Um, because, you know, in healthcare, everything is uh, dependent on the reimbursements that come from the insurance company. Right. <laughs> if they don't want to reimburse for telemedicine, it's not going to. Not going to do it. <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> Guess that's being reimbursed now, huh? <laughs> that's right. All bets are off. Exactly. Yeah. So it really proved both in the community from um, pediatricians to the specialists in the hospital, it proved to be a very effective way to deliver care to our patients in a safe way, reduced their exposure, reduced, mitigated their risks mitigated the risks of, of our personnel in the hospital and, and made it possible over these last several weeks to mm -hmm. get through while still meeting healthcare needs. So the best, the best thing about telemedicine, no needles. Ah, yeah, they haven't figured out how to- they haven't figured to, that out yet. And I'm glad, give them a chance, they probably will. I'm just saying, I, I've, had, I've had one telemedicine visit so far and I was like, ha, 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 you can't stick a needle. You can't so, yeah. <laughs> you can talk all you want. It's going to be great. <laughs> yes, you're so, you're, so, you're so right, Jonathan. Um, but, you know, now the things are changing. But, you know, the good news in Western Pennsylvania is that, um, you know, the surge did not come. Right. Thankfully for uh, the children in our region and for our mm -hmm. hospital, while we were prepared, the surge did not come. Okay. So it's time to ramp up and be, um, be adding those cases for procedures that have been delayed and surgery exactly. that's been delayed. My own daughter um, uh, was supposed to get her knee operated on right around March 20th. Oh, so didn't had, happen, right. Yeah, we had to take that off the schedule. Oh, and, um, oh. But, but she just had it last week at Children's Hospital. Fabulous experience. There you go. Very cool. So I'm glad. So they're starting to now get back to a little bit of business as usual with all types of safety, obviously, right. completely at the at the forefront. And I, yeah. and I guess there's just going to be a backlog of cases like your own daughter, where it's like they had to put these things off and they can't wait. And at some point they have to get done. And so it's, it's great to know that the Children's is, is up and doing that. 
Um, maybe tell us a little more about what's going on within the hospital. There's some new things going on. I think like around, around bingo and things like that are happening sure. like in order to keep people entertaining and moving and grooving. So what's up with all that? Well, you know, regardless of uh, the virus, we still have kids that are battling cancer. And we still have kids that are having organs transplanted and being cared for with lengthy hospitalizations for a variety of other medical conditions. And that's a really tough time for a kid and for their family to be in the hospital. During these last nine weeks, eight weeks, that's been extremely difficult. We've had to, for precautionary measures, limited the number of visitors that can accompany right. a child. Oh, how terrible if like you're a kid in the hospital and like you can't have your whole family around you. It's no. just like, are, are, are there still, were there still allowances for at least like a mom or a dad to be there? Right, so you can have one, uh, you could have one parent. They're gonna start expanding that, but you can okay. have, in this past, these past several weeks, you could have one parent or one caregiver. And um, you know, a, a backstop for helping to support kids while they're in the hospital when parents can't be by their side are volunteers in our child oh, list. That's cool. 800 volunteers had to be called away and, and weren't able to report. I never even thought about that, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they just, it's not essential, I guess, you know, obviously. And, and so you had to do the exposure and keep things locked down. Like, oh my goodness. Pet therapy. We have a lot of people, a lot of our volunteers. Oh, I didn't think about that part <laughs> either. Oh my goodness. Jeez. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You yeah. know, everybody's gotten creative and there are some really, um, Can you zoom some dogs in or something like that? Well, we, we did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> These are virtual dog visits or virtual pet therapy visits. Those are almost as good. They're not as furry, but you no. know, nonetheless, you still get the looks, right? Right. The sensory, uh, <laughs> it doesn't deliver just in the same way, but visually it's a, it's a good, um, distraction. Yeah. So with, with, wow. uh, you know, our child life specialists, they're really, um, the team in the hospital that is most focused on keeping a kid's um, uh, experience as normal as possible. Definitely. And so they bring activities to them at the bedside. There's art and music therapists that come and visit with our kids at the bedside in a safe manner. Okay. The best thing is that, and timing really couldn't be better in this way, we opened our Dream Big Studio, which is a um, closed circuit television and broadcasting studio. Okay. We opened it in September and it's been a blessing during I was going to say that's probably like your secret sauce right now, it right? Is. I mean, so you got this in-house thing to keep, to keep people occupied and positive and everything, right? Yeah, we can deliver um, games and cooking um, tips and uh, coaching and all, all kinds of information and experiences that help to distract and pass the time. Yeah. Help them feel like, wow. I, you know, there's other people that are going through what I'm going through um, and bring a smile to their face. And most importantly, this is also a bridge to parents and helping them feel connected and feel Absolutely. less isolated and feel less alone during right. these, these challenging yeah, times. I think we often forget, I mean, it's not just the child that's sick, but the parents sick to death because their child's sick. And so there's a whole element you have to deal with there as well too. So man, you guys are like juggling a lot of crazy balls there at the same time to keep everybody okay. It's a, it's a big task. It's a terrible burden. I think as parents to um, have to make difficult choices when you're, when your kid is sick, you want to be with your kid and you want to be next to them. And yet there are all these other forces that are, are, um, are, are barriers and hurdles to manage, especially if you have fewer resources. Yep. For instance, transportation. During the last eight weeks and how you navigate getting around the city, if you don't have your own vehicle. It's not happening, right? Yeah. I am bringing a child to the hospital who's sick. I mean, those are, those are big challenges. And you, when you have a sick kid, you lean on a community that helps you through those times. Mm -hmm so hard to lean on that community when you have to stand six feet apart um, and stay at home. So, if you lean at six feet, you kind of fall over sometimes. Right. <laughs> you know, it right. Doesn't, right. doesn't quite work, right. unfortunately, but we try, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So tell me about, I mean, obviously I mean, there's just needs across the hospital and we've been seeing people and organizations step up to provide personal protection equipment and, and things like that. What's the story going on there? 
You know, we've, oh, I, I'm so proud to be a resident of a community and of, of, a, of a city that has stepped up in so many ways to help others. And Children's Hospital is um, not an exception uh, in terms of how people have reached out to be of support to the patients and families and to our employees. Um, we've had a number of folks that have uh, provided offers or, or introductions to other sources for PPP, you know, PPE as we were trying to acquire that in the early stages. Unfortunately, UPMC Children's and UPMC as a hospital system mm -hmm. are resourced in that regard. Um, but we have, um, we have folks that wanted to support our healthcare workers, our frontline staff. Definitely. Yeah. Right? It, it was scary. It is scary. And they worked hard and they made sacrifices to be there for everyone when they were needed most. And a lot of people wanted to show their, um, their support by sending food and sending donations. Um, and lastly, we did, because of the emerging um, situation and urgent needs that we could see arising both for patients and families and for employees, we launched the Helpers Fund. Okay, what's that? Give me more Roger details. Says. Yeah, we want, we, always we look for the helpers. Help, so, okay, right, right. So the Helpers Fund is making sure that we can help um, our patients and families that are in the hospital that either need that support with transportation, basic needs met with food, or helping to to make sure that the the electric bill doesn't get turned off. Right. They oh my goodness. Go home with their child who has asthma or, or right. whatever the case may be. Um, it's it helps to bridge that care into the community. And then we have families that are struggling in the community. And Children's Hospital, a lot of people don't realize our, our service, our impact is much beyond the walls of the hospital in Lawrenceville. And we do a lot of outreach in the community, um, making sure that, that kids are vaccinated. We do, um, we do a lot of home visits. Um, there's a lot of support that's made available through the team at Children's. And so our Helpers Fund is an extension of ways that they can make sure those basic needs for families in the community are met. Wow, so much important work going on here. It's like blowing my mind. It's making me well, feel like I'm not doing enough, man. Like, geez. <laughs> I doubt that's the case, Jonathan. I, I don't know, know man. I'm a, I think I'm a slacker at this point. My goodness, man. You guys are going to make me step up my game somehow. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing to me. I mean, so how can companies and individuals that, that want to get involved, like I'm thinking, how do I get involved? What 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 are ways that can be helpful? I know it's uh, I know it's 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 tough for us. Uh, it, we're all in different situations, but uh, I'm sure there's different ways we can all be part of this somehow. I'm so grateful for the question, Jonathan, because I, there are a lot of different ways that people can show their support and give back, and especially I, a lot of individuals. We're not getting our hair done. We're not. <laughs> We're not going. No, I'm getting mine done all the time. Right right now. <laughs> we're all looking a little shaggy. Um, we're not going out to dinner the way we did. We're not shopping, you know, buying the clothes and other um, ways that our discretionary spending would go out the door. And for those that still have that discretionary spending, giving back makes us feel good. So um, certainly if, if any of your listeners are, are interested in directing that support to Children's Hospital, giving to our our um, helpers Fund is one way by visiting ch um, give to children's dot org okay. helpers and um, giving to um, various events like our virtual walk for children's, which is going to be celebrating our fifth anniversary yeah. in six. Okay. But, People can, like walk yeah. laps in their house while they're like on Zoom or something like that. Like, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be an experience for all of us. I'm not sure exactly how we, you're happen. adapting. I like this. It's we are adapting. Well. Yes. We are adapting. In fact, I think today um, JDRF is hosting their gala, their annual gala virtually. So, <laughs> it happens. We're innovative. We we yes. Out. Um, but the most important thing with the virtual, uh, going to a virtual walk for us is for the last four years when we showed up on Shenley Park and, um, and walked for children's, it was really such an emotional and, and spiritual experience that we're mm -hmm. walking shoulder to shoulder with the people that serve as nurses and doctors and administrators and other healthcare providers in the hospital that are there cheering on the patients that they care for, the lives that they've saved. But 
we're walking shoulder and shoulder with the families that are so grateful. Yeah. That life was That's there. so cool. You got a lot of that. The care is there. And we don't want to miss an opportunity to hold up right. that, um, that experience, even if it has to be virtual yep. uh, during this time. So Maybe it being virtual will make it even cooler this year. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Because yeah, yeah. you know what? People are going to be like, yeah, we're doing this virtual because nothing's going to stop us. Right. So you feel even more solidarity behind it, right? <laughs> right. But I do feel like, uh, you know, for all the time that we're sitting behind the computer at the desk, remote mm -hmm. from home, my step volume is pretty low. So I've got to get my work <laughs> in. Um, but supporting Walk for Children, sponsorships, you know what? Companies are struggling too. So not even sponsorships, do some do some employee engagement, get them rallied around getting a team together. Okay. Excited and energized and doing something good. And that can happen. So visiting give to childrens.org, um, our walk page is up, get okay. it registered. It will make a big difference in the life of children. In the Most life. definitely. And we're going to put those links in the liners of this as well too. So people have them and they can click Thank on it. Thank you. Hopefully be part of that. Cause I think it's fantastic. This is story has completely lifted my spirits today because like, I'm just learning about how you guys are just being helpful no matter what. And, and your work just blows my mind. So like I said, I, I I'm honored to have been able to talk to you today and I really want to encourage everyone to learn more and go be helpful with Children's Hospital because they're doing some crazy cool work there. And it's for the freaking children for crying out loud. These poor sick kids, like let's get them better. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Jonathan. It was a pleasure to be with you and to Likewise. talk about these things. We really appreciate it. Great stuff. You're doing a great job.